people do. Just want to do a quick video about luminol in reference to the Albert's carpet that Karen's got in storage. While luminol is an invaluable tool in forensic science for its ability to detect blood traces, it's really not as simple as that. We're talking about a decades old carpet that has been lived on by possibly two generations of families and multiple pets. The primary reactive agent in luminol is triggered by haemoglobin, but humans aren't the only ones who have haemoglobin in their blood. Any living creature that bleeds red has haemoglobin in its blood. The food that you feed to your dog and your cat most likely has haemoglobin in it. Some plant foods like turnip, parsnip and horseradish can cause luminescence very similar to that of a bloodstain as well. In addition to that, a clean freak who might use bleach based products to clean with may also cause a luminescence as well along with a wide range of products containing copper and iron and lastly it may actually distort blood pattern and destroy the blood or other evidence on the carpet. I know luminol probably sounds like the cure-all for the carpet problem but it really isn't. There's two interesting cases that I can recall just off the top of my head. One you all will be very familiar with, the West Memphis 3 case and another one is an Australian case which some of you may not have heard of called the Bob Chapel murder. In the West Memphis 3 case, you may recall they used luminol in a swampy area in the northern edge of West Memphis where the victims were found. The stream by which they used the luminol was well known as a fishing spot. And what do you suppose goes down on the bank of a stream that's known for fishing? Probably a lot of slaughter of fish. And what colour blood do fish have? Well, that's right red blood, so it's obviously got haemoglobin in it. The reason luminol's not admissible in court and wasn't admissible in the West Memphis 3 case is because it's a presumptive test, meaning it detected blood, but whose blood was it? Was it fish blood or human blood? Those tests were never done. Detectives in the Sue Neill Fraser case, the murder of Bob Chapel here in Tasmania, made the same mistake. They sprayed Bob Chappell's rubber dinghy that he uses to go fishing in with luminol, and what do you suppose they found? A whole bunch of blood. Whose blood? We don't know because they didn't test it. But we do know that a dinghy that is used for fishing is likely to have fish blood in, on and all around it. In the case of Sue Neil Fraser's trial, the prosecution was allowed to use the luminol evidence. In the case of the West Memphis Three, although it was never entered into evidence, many people still today say that they were guilty just based on a presumptive luminol test. Even though neither cases ever proved that it was human blood or even the victim's blood that the luminol had reacted to. Anyway, that's the reason that luminol is not exactly going to help narrow things down by too much with regard to Karen's carpet problem. There's still going to be a lot of stains that aren't going to produce anything even though the luminol has reacted to it. And that still adds up to a heck of a lot of swabs. Anyway, on another note altogether, remember back when Aidan Carney was indicted for having done a license plate scan on someone's number to track down the driver of a certain vehicle? It was actually this very van parked in the driveway at the Albert's house and the driver was putting things in the back that he was taking out of the house. One of those things was, you guessed it, the carpet. 
It was, in fact, Aidan Carney who alerted Team Reed that this was going down, who then immediately got their P.I. to head out there and grab the carpet. So, as far as chain of custody goes, it went from the house to the truck to Karen's temperature-controlled storage facility and nowhere in between. It's no wonder the McAlberts hate him so much, right? <laughs> 